Get ready, guys, because we are about to talk about processing the seasons. And this is definitely one part of emotional healing that I love talking about. It's something that you don't really hear about much in sermons or in teachings. And therefore, I was really fortunate to be taught this during my time in seminary. Amen. And so this is a huge part of emotional health that is neglected. Processing the seasons has to do with the seasons of our lives that we have experienced losing something. These losses can manifest themselves in many different ways. They can be both good and bad losses. The most common bad losses are the death of a loved one. When you lose a loved one, such as a parent or a child, a spouse, or even a pet, that's something that really affects a person. And usually it's something that does not go away if you don't process it. It's something that will just linger and it eats a person up inside. And unfortunately, I have seen many people's lives destroyed when they don't process the death of a loved one. The next one is abuse. Abuse as a child, a teenager, or as an adult. Um, and this can be emotional, this can be physical, this can be sexual abuse. Um, usually people who I've encountered that have been through abuse in these different ways most of the time are dysfunctional in many different areas of their lives and unless you process the loss of your innocence unless you process the abuse you went through you won't be able to become functional usually it is not the case that people who have been through this turn out all right unless it's a miracle of God and God can do those miracles but usually from my experience in this ministry of healing people people are damaged another another one another bad loss could be the loss of a job you're losing your source of income or you're forced to leave your home. You have to move out somewhere. Um, you know, sometimes you can't pay the bills or sometimes you're forced to move. I can think of many different situations that we're dealing with today that could fit into this context. That is a loss. Another loss could be the lack of the paternal um, hurt abandonment your father or your mother was not there they they abandoned you or they hurt you whether they intended to or not sometimes a lot of times our parents don't mean to hurt us but they still end up hurting us in the process through different ways um sometimes it could even just be the fact that they are absent in a certain area of our life that we might need them or want them in. Absence can be just as much lacking a parent as an orphan is. Emotional absence is just as bad as physically not having your parent there. Another example is a lack of siblings. That's another form of hurt and abandonment, not having a brother or sister there with you. Um, another form of loss could be breakup, a breakup of a significant other. Uh, usually in my experience with people who have uh, been through breakups, most of the time it was very hard for them. It was difficult. It was uh, hard for people to move on from that person that they were with because they loved that person or they shared so many memories with them. They felt they were happy with them. 
Therefore, when they break up, it's like that person takes a piece of them with them. And so uh, what ends up happening in these circumstances when you don't process the seasons of your life, when you don't process the loss, you could some examples could be that you become emotionally numb. You become hyper emotional. You could become not emotional. Uh, maybe you were not allowed to express anything at all in your life. And so for those of you who have not processed these things, you ever notice that you recycle the same emotions as if it were happening all over again? That's what happens when you don't process. You stay stuck in that emotional cycle. And so this is a huge part of emotional health that is neglected. The thing is, I don't think we realize half the time that we are neglecting it because we are so distracted by our daily lives uh, that it gets to the point we have no time for what is actually important. That is the health within our soul. And so that is something that we are going to be dealing with in our life loss bad loss it's going to happen it's inevitable there is no avoiding it but there is a way to process it in a healthy manner so that we don't stay stuck in the past we can move forward into a glorious future but i want you to understand something else that is that not all losses in life that we experienced are necessarily bad either although they still need to be processed and it's interesting because when i learned this concept of mourning your losses in life that were good this opened up a whole new door for me because i realized that there are good losses that you need to process and we never considered them as losses so some of these losses are a new job, a promotion. You have a new level of responsibility. Therefore, the loss is that you're losing your old position. You're losing the flexibility to have less responsibility. You're losing the flexibility to have less responsibility. Another good loss in life is marriage, believe it or not. It is the end of single life. It's the end of you having many options. Now you are sticking to your one option or to the option that you are going to be living the rest of your life with. So you're ending one season and you're entering into another. But you still need to grieve the loss of single life living a single life it could be moving to a new location leaving your old neighborhood uh, for me when I left Nyack that was a loss for me but it was a good one because I was now going from one point, one phase, one chapter of my life into a new one. But I needed to grieve the ending of the old season, the old comfort, the familiarity of where I was, and I was moving to a place that I knew nothing about. Another good loss could be success in life. Some of you have a fear of success or a fear of pride in your success. Some of you genuinely love the Lord and you don't want to become prideful in your success so you're afraid of going there. Or childbirth could be another loss in a good way because now you are no longer just you and your spouse now there is the responsibility of a new life that is being brought into your family and the thing about these things is that they are all good things but they are still losses because you are 
But like I said, you're gaining new responsibility that doesn't allow you the same freedoms you once had. That needs to be processed to transition properly. All of these different things I just mentioned are the ending of one season and stepping into another where something greater is being given to you because you were faithful in your last season. But now you need to put some old habits away. You need to bring some new change into you, some new habits, so that your character is making room for the new season that you're stepping into. Amen? There are things that cannot come with you. There are things that need to uh, be left in the last season. And so you need to grieve, you need to mourn those things. And I want to teach you right now that it is biblical to mourn. I want everyone to understand that it is biblical to mourn during the ending of a season in your life while transitioning into the next season. There are so many Christians who reject this concept of grieving. And one reason I believe so is because they are lazy. They don't want to process what they've been going through in their lives. And so a lot of times it is painful to process those things. It's annoying. It's frustrating. And I've done this thing called processing the seasons a lot. And so I know what I'm talking about, that it is painful, it is annoying, and it is frustrating, but it is so beneficial to engage in. But the thing is, people just want things to go away and magically disappear. There are some people who grew up in families where you are either not allowed to show any emotion at all, or you grow up in a family where people are overly emotional and don't know how to process things in a healthy manner so that you could move on. However, that is not how creation was wired together. Let us look into some biblical examples of mourning. So the first one I'm going to look at is the death of Aaron, the high priest, the first high priest. And that is in the book of Numbers, chapter 20, verse 28 to 29. Numbers, chapter 20, verses 28 to 29. After Moses had removed Aaron's garments and put them on his son Eliezer, Aaron died there on top of the mountain. Then Moses and Eliezer came down from the mountain. When the whole congregation saw that Aaron had died, the entire house of Israel mourned for him 30 days. And so I want you to see here that in Hebraic culture, it was a custom that when there was a loss, people took time out of their routine to actually mourn the loss of what just happened. And so now let's look at another one where Israel mourned the death of Moses. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 5 to 8, it says, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, as the Lord had said, and he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab facing Beth Peor, and no one to this day knows the location of his grave. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, and his vitality had not diminished. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning for Moses came to an end. And so here we see again another example of grieving, of mourning the loss of something, the loss of a leader. And so we could take this principle of grieving and apply it to many different areas of our life. It might not necessarily be 30 days, but the point is that there was grieving and mourning and processing involved. But let's continue. 
Now let's look at the death of Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 1 says, Then Samuel died, and the Israelites gathered together and lamented for him, and buried him at his home in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. So we see again that when there was a loss, the Israelites would come together and they grieved, they processed what happened because they understood. There was some understanding within them that they just could not hold it in. They could not allow it to linger. They had to deal with it now or they never would. Some of you have not dealt with your issues because you didn't properly deal with it when it first happened. And if you don't deal with it now, again, you never will. Do not stop ignoring your issues. You need to process them. Do not stop ignoring your losses, both bad and good. You need to process them so that you can move forward. Let's move on and talk about David and Jesus mourning. Psalm chapter 6 verse 6 says, I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. So we see here that King David is grieving and mourning the ending of one season of his life and he is crying before God. That should show you all, let me just say this, that should also show you men that it is masculine to cry. It is not unmasculine to cry. As a matter of fact, I think it's unmasculine not to cry because you're trying to hide your emotions rather than having the strength to show those around you that you have what it takes to allow yourself to feel what's in the inside let's look at Jesus morning this particular story in the gospel of John is about when Lazarus had died and so it's in John 11 32 to 36 and it says then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him she fell down at his feet saying to him Lord if you had been here my brother would have not died therefore when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and he said where have you laid him they said to him Lord come and see Jesus wept then the Jews said see how he loved him. Now, whether that's why he was weeping or not in the context, that's not the point of what I'm trying to say. The point is Jesus wept. He mourned the loss in his humanity, even though he knew he was about to resurrect Lazarus. But that doesn't... That's not the point. That's not that that what I'm trying to show you is that Jesus in his humanity still felt the pain of what it meant to lose someone that he loved, that he loves. This is to show that Jesus was still human. He still had real emotion. It wasn't like he was just this person in a cloak walking around like a robot that had no ex expression to him. This wasn't like a March of the Wooden Soldiers experience where he was just walking around like this. Jesus was a real man who had real emotions and he had real tears. And so, I want you to see clearly that there are different examples that can be seen in which mourning 
showing emotion in a healthy manner, grieving is a biblical concept. And it is something that we need to grasp. There is no exceptions here. Uh, we need to grasp this reality that we need to grieve uh, or else we're just going to be shattered into pieces and we're not going to be able to be useful at all <coughs> for the kingdom in the way that we are meant to because we're all falling all over the balcony uh, hysterical uh, you know that uh, some uh, we, we lost something or someone 30 years ago I'm not saying that it didn't really happen Please don't misunderstand me. I am not saying it didn't really happen. But the point is if you don't deal with it in a healthy manner, you're going to keep on falling over the balcony. Maybe that's not a good example. But anyways, you get my point. You're going to you're going to be falling over the couch. That that's a better one. You're going to be falling over the couch every day just because you shattered a plate or you you uh you accidentally hit your dog with a pillow or something i don't know some people could be really emotional like that but my point is you need to grieve you need to process it's very important and i can tell you this because i've done it for i've i've done it for about six years now it's going on six years now that i've that i've done this so I know that this works. I know that this is beneficial. I know that I know that the Lord can bring healing to a person's soul when they have chosen to process their emotions and go before the presence of the Lord vulnerable enough to be like, Jesus, I need you to heal me. I need you to take this from me. Help me to deal with this so that I could move forward in what you have for me. And so let's talk a little bit about what happens when you don't process. All of the things that were mentioned are not limited to what other losses could be experienced. The thing is that Jesus doesn't want you to be held back by the losses you have experienced in your life. When you don't process, you can't move forward properly because you will always be second guessing, always looking back, always wondering, always recycling emotion, as I said before, never letting go, never looking up to God. God has got so much more for you, and he wants you to experience all that he has for you, but you have to process the hurt. You have to process the losses of your life. You cannot experience the more that God has for you if you keep holding on to the past. But you see, some of you here are stubborn and you think that holding on makes you strong. Meanwhile, your arm is about to be ripped off from holding on to it. Yeah, is there a place for holding on to certain things? Sure. For example... There's a place to hold on to Jesus for dear life because we live in such a wicked, sinful world. That's a whole different type of holding on. Holding on to Jesus is not going to harm us in the long run. Hallelujah. Holding on to your pain will. The junk in your soul is dead weight. Jesus wants you to let go of the dead weight you have been holding on to. That's why it's so important to process because it gives you a chance to get what's in the secret place out in the open where God has his arms wide open, ready to receive all your junk so you can be healed. So I want to tell you guys a story. When I used to be in youth ministry, my youth leader gave a powerful story that always stuck with me. And this was probably about, 
I'd say about 12 years ago that this story was told. And it was this, by the way, the name I'm about to mention, I'm not talking about anyone specific. This name was used as an example within the story. This, the, the, the story was talking about what we would call a dead Charlie. And my youth leader had told this story about how Charlie was dead, you're in the desert, and you keep on dragging dead Charlie with you, and you are unable to move past certain things or you're unable to move to the next destination at the time that you should get to it because you're holding on to dead charlie because dead charlie is heavy but that when you let go of dead charlie suddenly there is a weight off your shoulders and therefore you're able to move at a much quicker pace. You're able to move in greater lengths that you weren't able to before because you're no longer holding on to dead Charlie. And so the moral of the story for us in those days was let go of dead Charlie. And in the context of that story, that was talking about sin in our life. However, we could also bring that dead Charlie story, that dead weight story, into this context that when you are carrying dead weight from the junk in your soul and you don't process the seasons of your life, you will begin to hold on to that dead weight and it will weigh on you more and more and more and you will get more tired and more tired and more tired until you can't move forward anymore. You're just completely stuck. You can't go anywhere because you have dead weight on you. And so the purpose of processing the seasons is to let go of the dead weight that you have been carrying so that you could experience freedom in Christ and move forward into what he has for you. Is Jesus' desire that you move in everything that he has for you? But it's your choice to let go of that dead weight or not. I'm sorry, guys. This is just reality. I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be inconsiderate or anything like that. Believe me, I've. Uh, this is a difficult this is a tough topic to talk about at times because uh, people people don't want to process their hurt. People don't want to go there. There are people who do, and when they do, there's transformation. But this has to be talked about. This has to be addressed. You need to be challenged in this area. There's no way that you're going to be able to be free the way that you want to unless you deal with the dead weight and I know from experience I held on to dead weight for many many years many 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 years and bitterness was one of those dead weights that I held on to for a long time but when I let it go there was so much freedom in Christ there was so much that God uh, did in my life and there's so much that he's still doing in my life You'd be amazed at how much dead weight we actually carry in different areas, different dynamics. You could come up with examples, write it down, come up with different examples of dead weight that you could be holding on to in your life. You need to let it go. Jesus did not make you to be a prisoner. He made you to be a prince. Jesus did not make you to be a prisoner. Jesus made you to be a prince. Hallelujah. That'll preach. Amen. I want someone to type amen in the comment section. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are princes. And for the for the for the women, you are princesses. 
Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so let's talk a little bit about unhealthy processing. The world has their own way of processing things gone through life. When you're going through things in your life, the world has its own methods for processing things. Some examples are love of money or a lust for power. You find that people are always looking to make money in some type of way and somehow having money have especially having a lot of money and power gives them a false sense of security it's a false security when really the lord is the one who's supposed to be our security and i'm about to say this next one and some of y'all are not gonna like me at all some of you might even end this video as soon as i say this one but i'm gonna say it anyways because it's true idolizing sports let me get even more specific men. Idolizing football. Idolizing Sunday night football. I can't tell you how many men would leave church early just so that they could watch football. Um, hello. Sunday in today's society. Sunday's supposed to be God's day. Why are you rushing out of church to watch football? Listen, the playoffs can wait, okay? Jesus is more important. Now, am I saying don't watch sports? No, I like sports. I watch sports. I watch different sports, but I like sports. But I don't put those things before Jesus. And men, let me tell you something. What God gives, he can take away. Be careful. Don't let football become an idol. It already is an idol. But don't let it become an idol in your life. God will take it away from you. Let's, let's continue because I could keep going and ranting on that one. Because that one, that one kind of irks me a bit. It, honestly, it really does because I know so many people who are bound by it. And it's a sport. Anyways, uh, another way that people process in the world in an unhealthy manner is sex outside of marriage, pornography, masturbation. This is a way that people process things. Sometimes people... I've known people who have told me that sometimes they need to have sexual intercourse multiple times a day just to get through the day. I've known people who told me that they watch porn for hours and hours and hours. I've known people who masturbate multiple times during the day to get through the day. Because sometimes people's days are so stressful. This is an unhealthy way of processing. Another unhealthy way of processing is stealing. You want things, so you go steal it. Another way of unhealthy processing is excessive gaming. Oh man, there are so many people I know who escape their problems through video games. Am I saying video games about? No, I've played video games my whole life. I remember when the PS1 came out. I remember playing games before it came out. I'm old enough to remember that, praise the Lord, but I'm still young enough, hallelujah. But anyways, um, are games bad? No. But excessive gaming? I remember when I used to play video games, man, I would play video games sometimes all the way till 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. And then I had to go to school the next day. You could imagine how exhausted I was. Some days I would skip school, especially when I was in high school. There were days where I would just make up that I was sick just so I didn't have to go to school. Sorry, Mom, but that is the truth. 
Um, and by the way, I'm not advocating that you young people do that. I'm just being honest on what I used to do. Thank God I stopped. Social media is another way that people unhealthy process. Oh my gosh, the scrolling on social media. You have no idea how many people I catch in church just scrolling through Instagram or through TikTok or Facebook or something. And they're just scrolling. And they're scrolling and scrolling. And I'm saying, what in the world is more entertaining on social media than being in the presence of the Lord right now? Or let's forget about church. You're outside. You're, you're, you're interacting with people. You're at a dinner table or you're out with friends and everyone's on their phone. You have no idea how often that pisses me off when I'm with friends and I see them all on their phone and guess what none of them are talking to each other because they're all on their phone we can we can yes this is an iPhone this was a gift I didn't buy this we can reach someone on the other side of the world within seconds on this yet a person who's standing or sitting right next to us we're so far away from them we've gotten things backwards man too much secular music is another example of unhealthy processing drugs alcohol smoking huge ways of unhealthy processing and, and uh, you know people use it to numb their pain um, so many stories I can tell you of people that I know who did drugs and they would they would constantly be high because they would, they would forget about the pain or the anger or the hurt that they would feel and it would just mask it for a time but when the high came off or when they started getting sober from drinking, it would just come right back. Another example, believe it or not, is gambling or fighting. There are some people that like to gamble because it's it's a way that they they just they, they're trying to distract themselves. Fighting because there are some people who really like to fight and get physical. They they just like to fight because they want to hurt someone because they want someone to feel the pain they're feeling and they let it out in a physical way and that is so more than anything that that gives me sorrow that you're so angry or hurt that you're willing to physically harm someone else just so that you could feel better mm-hmm <laughs> Another way is the occult. That's another unhealthy way people process the occult. Going to a psychic or going to a medium, especially in contexts of losing a loved one. Going to a medium to talk with your deceased mother or your aunt or your grandmother. I have a whole PowerPoint on the occult. I'm not going to get into it in this one, but I'm sorry, people. That is not your mother. That is not your great aunt that is not your grandmother that that that's not your relative you're dealing with a with a with a familiar spirit when you engage in the occult you're stepping into a dangerous realm a very dangerous realm when you go there but nevertheless people go to it people go to it to to process to, in an unhealthy way the things in their life gossiping oh this is a big one. Oh, my hispanic people are gonna love this one my hispanic people my boricuas are gonna love this one okay man gossip gossiping is just so embedded in the culture that and not just hispanic culture but but cultures all around but you, you typically tend to see it 
interestingly in Hispanic cultures, it's just so much a part of the culture that people don't think that it's wrong. Everyone does it. And it's not wrong if everyone does it, right? But it is wrong. And I have come to believe that gossiping is another form of bearing false witness. Because usually when you're gossiping, usually, I'd say, let's see, maybe about 70 to 90% of the time when you're gossiping about somebody, you're stretching the truth. You're not giving the truth. You're stretching it out to make it seem bigger than what it is. And that, my friends, is part of bearing false witness. That is a way that the enemy can get in. But we'll talk about that another day. Another way that people process in an unhealthy manner is through overeating or over drinking sugary drinks. Listen, I used to love soda. I've been soda free for actually in a praise the Lord in a week. It makes a whole year that I've not touched one soda. Has it been hard? Some days it has. And I used to be addicted. I'm talking about drinking a two liter Pepsi within like an hour. I was addicted to it because I was trying to mask, finding comfort drinks so that I could process my own stress that I was going through in my life. And the thing is, we are looking to try and fill the void through these things. But we come back for more and more and more. And we're never satisfied with it. And so... How do we process healthy? We spoke about all of the unhealthy ways that things are processed um, in life. But now I'm going to show you some real healthy ways to process. The first one I'm going to mention, which is a big one, is processing through journaling. Your thoughts need to have a safe place where you can completely unleash everything onto in a healthy manner. I want to encourage all of you to journal. And I truly believe that when you journal, when you process things in a healthy manner through journaling, you're able to release a lot of what's inside you, a lot of what's in your mind that you cannot verbally say to somebody because it would be terrible. You could put it in your journal. And there is tremendous release that happens when you do so. It is one huge healthy way to process the seasons of your life so that you could move forward. I was taught this during my time in Bible school. And I'm so glad that my teachers taught me this. I'm, I'm just so glad that they did and, and they know I'm grateful to them. But processing through journaling, whether you write it handwritten or you type it, can really really bring healing to your soul because you're no longer holding on to all of that junk you're releasing it 
you're opening up the dam that has been clogged up so that now all that garbage can be let go of. But let's continue. Another way that you can process in a healthy manner is prayers of forgiveness. And I cover this more in another slide, but prayers of forgiveness, releasing the bitterness that you have in your soul towards somebody, truly allows you to be free from demonic torment, emotional torment, and mental torment. Because now you're taking your bitterness, you're surrendering it to the Lord, and on the other hand, you're receiving the peace of God. So there is a double action that's taking place simultaneously. Amen. Biblical meditation is another way for you to process in a healthy manner. Now, why do I say biblical medita meditation? There are all different types of ways to meditate. Most of them are not good spiritually. Especially in the spiritual side where they could invite other spirits and other and, and demons and, and fallen angels, etc. Um, I'm going to give an example. One of them is yoga. Another one uh, is uh, like mantras. Like, like for example, the way um, the way monks meditate, especially Buddhist monks, and they say certain sounds over and over and over and over again. These are invoking things to come, and it's not it's not the Holy Spirit. However, there are biblical ways to meditate. You could meditate on God's word. You can sing, you could sing worship songs, playing instrument, playing worship, pardon me, playing worship through instrumentals. You can spend time walking in nature, listening to worship music or listening to the Bible and just meditating on the presence of the Holy Spirit that is there with you and the words of the song and the Bible scriptures. Remind yourself of the word of God. Speak it out loud. Listen to it. You could go for walks, hikes, jogs, going to the gym. Those are all healthy ways for you to process things. Having physical exercise, as my mother tells me, get those endorphins flowing. I started working out again, and it's been really helpful, praise God. But as you start to embark on that, you will notice a change because you're exercising your physical body. You're releasing a lot of that stress, anger, frustration in your workouts. Another thing that you could do, and I personally do this with people that I mentor. So if I'm mentoring you, I'm going to be taking you through this. Breaking inanimate objects to release anger. You will often find that when you take an inanimate object that you could safely break, Once you've expressed your anger on it, a lot of times underneath that is sorrow, sadness, grief. You've removed the shell, the top layer, and now you're seeing what's really there. Another way that you could 
process things is you could change your eating habits. This is something that I've done as well. And this is also very beneficial. What we eat is very important because you are what you eat. If you're eating life, as an apostle brother of mine says, if you're eating life, you're going to manifest life. If you're eating death, food that's very unhealthy, then you're going to manifest death. So take into initiative what you're eating, what you're putting into your body. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We should be caring for it as such. Another thing is change your scenery in your living environment. Sometimes you just may need to change your room up a bit. Move stuff around. Reorganize. Sometimes you just need things to look a little different. Another healthy way to process is fasting. This allows you to get closer to the Lord and focus more on the presence of the Holy Spirit. And finally, last but not least, crying. And I will talk more about that later. And so the point I want you all to understand is that you need to give yourself time to heal. Sometimes you need to wrap a wound first so the irritation can calm down before you begin to work on it. Give yourself time, but intentionally allow the Holy Spirit to still minister to you so that wound could be dealt with. And so... What I want you guys to understand is that processing the seasons is all about giving space to the Lord, allowing Christ to be the one to come in, take your baggage, and throw it into the sea where it will be remembered no more. And so I want you guys to remember that, to give your burdens to the Lord. Give your burdens to Jesus. It is through Jesus that your burdens can be alleviated off your shoulders. Father, I thank you in your mighty name. I pray that you would bring healing to your people. May you come down and invade your people emotionally so that they could experience freedom in Christ. May the Holy Spirit wash them clean. May your presence transform them in a way that they never thought was possible. May they see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. May they know without the shadow of a doubt that you are the healer, that you have wonderful plans for them, and you have so much more for them. Jesus, we invite you to come. Have your way, Lord. Move in this place. And so right now, guys, I want you guys to just take a moment and just be in his presence right now. Allow Jesus to heal you emotionally. Process your emotions with Jesus right now. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about my story a little bit. And then I'm also going to talk about the mistakes that I believe the church has made in this area and how we need to fix it. And there's one last thing I want to do really quickly. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. So if you guys want a journal to be able to process your emotions, then I want to give you an opportunity to buy my journal 
that I created for this occasion. It's called My Processing Journal. It is available on Amazon. For those of you who don't know, my name is Jason Rodriguez. You can put my name in the search bar of Amazon or you could put My Processing Journal and my name and this should appear. It's a pretty, it's a pretty decent sized, uh, it's a pretty decent sized journal. It's a uh, hundred and fifty pages, and uh, you will be able to process many things in your life through this. Amen. So again, uh, my processing journal. You can find this on Amazon um, if you want to engage in that process of grieving. Amen. Just thought that I would throw that out there. Praise the Lord. Um, and yes, uh, to, in case you guys are wondering, yes, I am an author. Uh, I am an author. I have, uh, by God's grace, by God's grace, I have written uh, seven books. Three of them are children's books. And the other ones are different types of books. Amen. And so God bless you guys. And I will see you all in the next video.